think just because this macho thing and like I, I kiss my son still, although he's about That's to beautiful. be 20, I tell yeah. him I love him. He could call me and be like, okay, dad, bye-bye. Okay. How many years have you been growing your hair uh, for? 17. I get looks, I get looks. I always get a question. Is it real? How, how do you wash it? <laughs> Can I touch? I always get those three questions. Uh, I have a son. Okay. I had him at 17. Do you guys ever go to bars together? Like We went to the club. I love Taiwan. I've never felt this safe in my life. But you, the China thing, you kind of have to keep that in mind. My dad would call me up and yeah. be like, hey, um, what's going on over there? Cole Fogel here, and today I am with Kareem. Hey. I want to say Kareem Abdul-Jabbar because I think <laughs> of the NBA player, right? My dad was a huge Laker fan. So. Oh. Okay. That's where he got the name. Kareem, where are you from originally? I originally was born in Georgetown, Guyana. That is in South America. Okay. Um, but I moved to Belize, which is in Central America, and I grew up there. Okay, so what language did you grow up speaking? Uh, English. Both English-speaking countries. Uh, coincidentally, both of them, both countries are the only English-speaking country in the region. Because when you say Guyana, I'm like picturing some yeah. exotic, I don't know. It is very exotic, but it's English speaking. It's actually considered part of the Caribbean, both countries. They're not islands, but they're beside the sea. Because you totally have the, that Caribbean accent. Yes, yes. When did you move to Taiwan? What year was that? I moved 2020. Well, oh, right we to, at all, the beginning of the pandemic. We all know COVID happened. Belize is a very high tourist industry country. Okay. Yeah. So Belize took a huge hit. And oh, you mean like, the, you mean it was rough? Yeah, the... because no one was coming in. That's how we make our money. Oh, um, you mean I they was... closed, they closed yeah, down. They closed the borders. Like what Taiwan did. Yep. Tourism is how the country makes money. So oh. it was tough time and uh, times. And yeah. I had to make a tough decision. And I so was that's like, what got you here. Yeah, actually. Yeah. The pandemic hit, money wasn't, wasn't great there. No. And you were like, well, what do I do? Well, let me come and do my master's. Oh, you came here to do your master's? Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. what's, uh, what school were you going to? Isho University. Oh, Isho, okay. Isho, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you came here in 2020. Yes. Who did you come here with? <laughs> well, uh, I have a son. Okay. I had him at 17, very early. You were 17? I was 17. Wow. Yeah, I was You 17. were a kid still. I was a kid doing adult things, I guess yeah, you could put course. it that way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But uh, a child is a blessing no matter of how course, it comes yeah. into the world uh, or regardless of the situation. Are you currently with the lady that you had? Uh, the... No, no, no. We were, we were high school sweethearts. Were you raising him from day one? Or... We were co-parenting. Oh, co-parenting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, the thing is we lived so close. Oh, so okay. it was... It was convenient. It was convenient. It was easy. And then she had another child because she moved on. I mean, we both moved on. Oh, okay. Because she needed help. So I kind of had my son a little bit more, which was awesome for That's me. That's really cool. I mean, yeah. I think it's often the mother. It's nice that the thought, like that you oh, got yeah. to be the, 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 the guy or like the one that was more involved. I wanted to end the cycle because my dad wasn't really there for me. Ah, so it was well, that's important beautiful. to be there for my son. Yeah. And when you have a son, you, you, you just need, in my opinion, you yeah. just need a male presence 100%, around. yeah, 100%. When I came here 2020, he was a senior in high school. Wow. And I was well, like, How old is that? That's... Uh, he was 17, 17. himself. Wow. So he was, was... That's was so crazy. Crossed. I was like, please don't do anything. Anyhow, <laughs> don't follow yeah. me. Don't have children <laughs> at 17. I came here first. Oh, okay. And then I, you know, just planted the idea in his yeah. head. Hey, just apply, see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he did. Were you living in Taipei at the beginning? No, we had to tow you in and we had to take a quarantine taxi and then come straight right, down to the Gaoshan. Pandemic. Okay, so, uh, were you, and then did you stay in a quarantine hotel? Quarantine hotel, two weeks. Why Gaoshan? Like what, uh, that's where school was? Yeah, yeah. When did your son come over here? Okay, so I came 2020 and set up everything. And I have to give a tribute to him because he was just so mature in handling it back home because he had to apply, he had to get all the certificates and everything uh, authenticated Oh yeah. Uh, by, by both embassies. So he came 2021 because he got into a school in Tainan, which is Kunshan oh, cool. University, doing mechanical engineering. 
And yeah, so he came 2021. And his quarantine was worse than mine because at least my quarantine had a window. Oh my his God, one, he didn't have a window? He was just in a room for two weeks. No, no that's I was jail. so upset about that. I called the hotel and like, is there anything? No, no. How could there be a room with no window? Uh, it still upsets me to think about. So he did 14 days with no window? No window. But you know, these young generation, he had his Xbox on the phones, and he had his schoolwork to do too. He was good, but for so, me, I was just, so I was more upset than he was. It was harder for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. for sure. It's your boy, obviously. Yeah. So exactly a year later, your son came. Came, yeah. How's university? Is he still in university? Yes, he's going to finish in 2025. How, how is he adjusting to life here? I think he's done better than I have, to be honest. Cause yeah? like I would call him, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, I'm going to Taichung or oh, I'm going to Kenting. So he's moving cool. around more than I am. Okay, right now he's, so he's what, is he about 18 now? Uh, he's 19, he's about he's to not, be he's a, man, he's a man yeah, now. He's, so I want to talk about dating for a minute here. So you're a single guy here yeah, yeah. currently. Mm -hmm. Your son is of dating age. Yeah. I remember we were talking, <laughs> do you guys ever go to bars together? Like We went to the club. Uh, isn't this, that interesting? It like, was super interesting because he was there talking to girls, getting numbers. And I'm just like, okay. Like, well, what's that like? Thing. But what's that like, though? Like having like a fully grown son. Like I, my my oldest son mm. is 13, so like I'm not quite at that. It's humbling because um, you know the the things I instilled in him. You can see him practice it daily, and you can be like, hey, wow, he actually listens. What values are really important to you um, that 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 you see him living now? Show love, I think, just because this macho thing and. Like, I, I kiss my son still, although he's about That's to beautiful. be 20. I tell yeah. him I love him. He could call me and be like, okay, dad, bye-bye. Okay, love you. And he would initiate it. I, I mean, think, I think that's a real man, personally. I, uh, I would agree. I always remember, you know, Paul Walker? The yeah. actor that died. Of course, yeah, yeah. I remember they interviewed his dad, and he was in tears, and he said, you know, the one thing I don't regret is I always told my son I loved him. So important. And that's the last thing he told his yeah. son, that I love you. And to me, it's like, we don't know when. Yeah. You don't know when. You don't know. So tomorrow may not be. You don't know. The culture here is not very huggy, lovey-dovey, feely. No, uh, there's no. a lot of uh, emotional suppression, I think. No, and uh, and maybe the opinion. values are different here, like mm -hmm. making money, providing as, a, as a, a father. And that's all important. Yeah. But tell your kid that you love them right after you watch this episode. Yeah, in fact, pause is, this episode yeah, right sure. now and tell your kid that you love them. If they don't, if you don't live with your kid, call them. Tell them you love them. You can't, you can't just assume that they know you. It doesn't take that much out of you either. I mean, there's I knowing, but then there's really knowing. Yeah, that's true. Feeling that's true. it. Feeling it, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's beautiful. Super. Okay, any other values that you... I think to be responsible in, <laughs> in the situation. <laughs> As to be responsible in... All aspects, right? Not only that one. But you can't say that you made a mistake because otherwise no, you wouldn't have I, this beautiful son I that you have, right? I don't consider me having a child. But you did mistake. also give up part of your childhood having it, a son. I call it a life altering. Yeah, life altering decision or a life altering situation. Yeah, I don't call it a mistake ever. Were there growing pains though, like oh, raising yeah. him at such a young age? Um, yeah, because I had to provide. Um, I had to stop school and I had to do night school. Oh wow. And then I had to odd jobs here and there. I was a security guard at one spell. I could see you being yeah. a security guard. <laughs> Think you were a personal trainer before, yeah, right? Yeah, I had a lot of odd jobs back home, and that was one of them, yeah. And I was going to say, <laughs> and he kind of showed me some ropes with uh, how to exercise properly a few months ago because I just started getting into weightlifting, mm -hmm. and you, you've greatly inspired me ah, like, thank you, man. when I met you and we chatted about that. And you feel more confident when you lift weights, actually. Yeah, it's true. Like, I feel better. And, then, and if you have any aggression, I don't know. When the yeah. day I'm angry, I just go lift weights and then yeah. I'm good after that. Uh, yeah, but it was, I would do it all again because my son is just amazing. So like, no regrets, obviously. No regrets. I mean, I have an amazing child. Dating in Taiwan. What's that like mm -hmm. for you? Dating is difficult. It's a, it's a great area here because yeah. if you meet a foreigner, yeah. then who is going to move to whose country. That's that problem you have to deal with. And then if you date someone that's local, then am I willing to stay in Taiwan for the rest of my life? I love mm -hmm. Taiwan, but am I willing to stay for the rest of my life? 
or is she willing to come to my country? Right. It's awesome to meet people. You know, I dated for, you know, sometimes to make friends. You know, yes, it might not work out romantically, but hey, you're still a pretty cool person. But there's always that big who is going to go where issue that I've faced. So then I would make the assumption you're not sure if you want to stay here indefinitely or if you want to eventually move on from here. Yeah, I'm not sure as yet. What, what's your overall feeling of Taiwan in the, in the three years and a bit that you've been here? Absolutely love it. Absolutely yeah. love it. Safe. I've never felt this safe. So safe. In my entire <laughs> life. Especially coming from my countries, I've never felt this safe in my life. Except for the traffic, maybe. Uh, yes, that's a very, very unsafe part of it. If you get it. the flow of it, though, you can survive, that's though. That's true. That's true. <laughs> You're, you're currently happy with your life here. You just don't know where the future is going to take you. I don't know. But you, the China thing, you kind of have to keep that in mind. You don't know if it's is going to happen. I, is that, you know, I never worry about that I at all. But I, I think I can't live my life that way. It seems that the Western world is playing more crap on the news than here. Hmm. CNN likes to over-exaggerate everything. That's true, because so. my dad would call me up and yeah. be like, hey, um, what's going on over there? I'm like, yeah. what's going on over here? Um. I don't know. What's going on? <laughs> and it's like, look at the news. And then it's like, oh, China yeah. flew over Taiwan. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That happens a lot. <laughs> it's different for me, because like my children, who are half Taiwanese, mm -hmm. we can pick up and go back to Canada if That's we needed true. to. But then I've got my wife, who's Taiwanese, yes. her father, her yeah, mother, mom, yeah. her brother, her, her sister, sister yeah, her other yeah. sister but I don't know how I feel about leaving her family, to be honest with you. And it's not only the China thing too, is I think at some point, maybe I want a slower pace. So that's why I'm not too sure. I but mean, there's Elan, Hualien, Tai true. Dong. That's true, that's true. Not that I'm trying to sell you, no, you no, need no, no, to, no. Kareem, you need to stay here. I love, I love Taiwan. I'm, I'm already sold. I would live in Kenting if I yeah. would. <laughs> if I could. Right? Man, Kenting is, oh, Kenting. I love Kenting. Is that your favorite spot? Ah. <sighs> Is a tie between Kenting and Shaoliocho. Oh, Shaoliocho is awesome. I just went there a couple of weeks ago. I love that little island. It's so chill and it's That's so close. So chill, so close. Kaohsiung is very laid back yeah. compared to Taipei. But I mean, when I get older, I definitely want something more slow pace. So what's your overall impression of the school system here? I think it's too much schoolwork. Ironic because I'm a school teacher myself and you can see the kids are affected by them. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, like some kids will have twitches and... Oh, do you think that's caused I, by... It's too much like pressure. Like ner nervous, yeah, nervous, nervous or anxious. And I hope I don't offend. And you can cut this out if you think it's offensive. No, yeah. But I, I feel that the schools are raising the kids here. It's not the parents raising the kids. They're married to their work. The kids are married to the school. And then everyone's just so tired at the end of the day. Education system alone is very good. Yeah. So the extra classes, maybe not so much. I just feel sorry for the kids. Uh, let them come out more. Let them enjoy being a kid. Because when you're an adult, trust me, I was adult at 17. When you're an adult, there's no going back. Because you became an adult at, at such a young, young age. age. Yeah, I wish I had more time to be a kid. Yeah. So I, I do feel for the kids. A little bit more playtime. It, it doesn't have to be a 90 is okay. An <laughs> 85 is okay. I mean, honestly, for me, a pass is okay. <laughs> my, my thing that I always think about just in regards to work and school and money and all that kind of stuff, I think about my grandmother. She lived to be 100. Mm. Wow. And I, I held her hand on her deathbed. And I remember thinking the only thing my grandmother cares about in this moment is the love that she felt for me that I could feel in her hand mm. and, and her children were around her when she was dying. We place so much importance on school and work and all that, but at the end of the day, we're all going to die one day. And what really matters? Does, does whatever that car is or clothes or certain type of house or certain mm. lifestyle, does any of that matter at the end of the day when you're lying there That's true. dying? Very true. I would definitely and, agree. And can we find some gratitude just for life itself, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I think it's very hard to do to find that balance. It is hard. A it's healthy so balance, hard to yeah. do. I, the healthy balance. Because again, we do need the money. Yeah. <laughs> we need the money. We, we need, need the health. We need when to we're... be with our family. So if you can find that balance. So hard. It's, it's very hard to do. Your hair. 
Oh, I yes. have to comment about this. <laughs> This gentleman's like the most beautiful, long, dreadlocked hair I've ever seen in my life. Oh, How many years have you been growing your hair uh, for? 17. January is going to make 18. Yeah. So yeah. Like you haven't cut it. In, I haven't cut it in, in almost yeah, yeah. close to 18 years. Close to 18 years. Yeah. One of our senses is in our hair. Mm. Mm. And apparently, if you keep cutting your hair, you are actually cutting off part of your senses. Oh, okay. How do you maintain that? It takes a long time to wash. It takes yeah. a lot of shampoo. You have to get soap it up really well. Uh, and drying it is the hardest part because... Hair dryer? Yeah, or the like... hair dryer, it, it stays wet for like almost a whole day. So I would need multiple towels, hair dryer, and then just let the breeze do does its thing. Why? Do you keep it so long? I think it's um, beautiful, but I'm just thinking more about the maintenance totally. of it. What keeps you um, from just going, I can't take this anymore and just cutting it? It's like, a way to express my individuality, okay. one. Um, yeah. In the Caribbean, there's a religion called Rastafari Rastafarian. I was, I, I, yeah, I wasn't sure. I, yes. I was gonna say that and I wasn't sure if it was I connected. I don't follow the religion fully, but there's some things about the religion, yeah. Rastafarian that I agree with. Can you give me an example of some of the belief? Well, it's just about positivity. Uh, and they do worship a different god, Selassie. Oh, interesting. So I don't really believe in that part too much. Yeah. But the positivity and the good vibes about the religion is something I think is pretty awesome. Um, it is a hassle, I'm not going to lie. But again, it's how I express my individuality. It shows patience because it takes patience to take care of this. Uh, I know I need to trim it because it is getting too long. Yeah. Um, dangerously long. Like on my scooter, I have to put it in my lap because it's like by the wheel almost. And I get I get that question a lot. How do you maintain it? How do you wash it? Is it real? And if you see him, please don't go up and grab his yeah, hair. Because no. some, yeah, some people would come up and this is... I get looks. I get looks. I always get a question. Is it real? How, how do you wash it? <laughs> Can I touch? I always get those three questions. Is this a cross? Yes, it is a cross. Because what I wanted to ask you, you said you were raised Muslim? No, my dad is Muslim. Your dad? Okay, so your dad is Muslim. My mom is Christian. And I was raised Christian. You were raised Christian. Yeah, okay. because I was with my mom. Mm -hmm. Okay, your parents yeah, yeah. are divorced, okay. How old were you when they, when they divorced? I was about eight, so it was tough times. Yeah, well, I, I come from a divorced family yeah. myself, and I hate the term broken family, because it's true. not broken, it's just different. Um, you know? Staying together for the child's sake never works. No, because there'll be an underlying <laughs> negativity between the two people. Because I know a lot of parents have done that, and a lot of parents are currently doing that. I think it could hurt them more. I, it hurts the kid even more. Because there's going to be this silent negativity. Mm -hmm. But for me, that break was hard. Yeah, I don't know for hard. you. Oh, I, mean, I mean, I, I was like, it was hard I was a me. teenager. Being an adult, no, I understand. But at then, at that age, yeah, I... No. Well, I appreciate this chat brother oh, man. Uh, anytime anytime any final final words of wisdom or anything you um, want to say before i close this up if you're new to taiwan give it a chance like try to do some of the stuff that the local people do because that's very fun as well yeah when i first came here i just stick to foreigner places yeah. or it's easy to do. yeah it's easy to do but then yeah. when you go to places where the locals go it's like hey this is beautiful hey this is more fun yeah definitely. so just be open to trying different things and different food, because there's some food I thought was very gross, looked gross, but when I ate it, it was nice. An example? Um, hot pot. That wasn't too, that didn't look too scrumptious, but now I, I love, love it. Pot. I love That's one of my favorite foods. I, I like I it in the summer pot. when it's hot, which is weird. Yeah, that's weird. That's yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit weird, yeah. All right, well, uh, thank you, brother. Yes, uh, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. Don't forget to go out and try new things. Try new be, things. be kind to your neighbor. Come from a place of love, as you said. Always. Great, great lesson to teach your son, to teach my sons, to teach everyone. everyone. And uh, I will see you in the next one. If you also want to become the next Bao Hong creator, please click the link in the description below.